So one program that I'll be helping with and heading is a Muay Thai program for children with ADHD and children on the ASD uh, spectrum. So people first, children who have autism. Hello and welcome to Fierce and Flawless, The Female Project. I am Dr. Antonella Kaler and I am on a mission to find out exactly what it takes to build an indestructible foundation and achieve our best reality. I am thrilled to bring you stories of inspiring women who were fierce and relentless when pursuing their passions, who did not blame their struggles on so-called character flaws, and who took control to lead extraordinary lives. If you're a woman who is tired of feeling like your life is merely a product of cause and effect, and you are ready to be the woman that causes the effect, keep listening to learn the necessary insights to navigate life's toughest challenges, break through the most disheartening plateaus, and unleash your inner alpha woman. And don't forget, you have the exclusive opportunity to win our Alpha Empowerment Book Bundle. It's three life-changing books whose authors you heard speak on the show and a 12-week wellness program by me. So please visit www.thefemaleproject.net slash podcast to find out exactly what you need to do to participate. So good luck and thank you for listening. Hello, Alphas, and welcome to another episode of Fierce and Flawless, The Female Project. Today, I had an amazing interview with one of the kindest women I know, professional Muay Thai fighter Janice Lin. Janice holds countless titles and was actually the first woman to represent Canada at the Muay Thai World Championship. Janice and I talk about the importance of finding a sport you love with your whole heart during your fitness journey. Also, the importance of self-defense for women, Thai culture, and why Muay Thai can be a fantastic activity for you and your kids. I am so happy to have had a chance to catch up with Janice before her move to Thailand to pursue her dreams. So keep listening for my interview with a beautiful alpha woman inside and out, a true champion, Janice Lin. Hi, Janice. How are you doing? Hey, how are you? I'm doing great. I guess I should really start with Sawadika, Janice. Mm-hmm. Sawadika, <laughs> we miss you. <laughs> yes, well, you know, I've been uh, busy uh, being thrown around the country. I did uh, keep up and do Muay Thai for a while in Ottawa. I actually had a couple of like uh, little demo fights and things like that. But then I was uh, sent off to a really tiny, really? tiny, yeah, a really tiny oh. place in Alberta. And then they did not have a gym. And then I got pregnant. So can't fight when you're a prego. Apparently, that's frowned upon. <laughs> <laughs> And after that, it's uh, just been, you know, baby, baby, baby life. So I'm uh, kind of crawling back onto the radar now. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, uh, congratulations. Trace, thank you for taking the time. You are very, very busy. I appreciate you taking a little bit of time to talk to me. Uh, no problem. <laughs> now, I'm going to give a little uh, backstory to our <laughs> listeners of my story of you and me. Uh, For those of you who have not seen Janice, Janice looks like a champion. And if you see Janice on a punching bag, it's just like watching an athlete in their natural habitat. Like it's, it's hypnotizing. So when I started at Crudar, I, uh, you were always my inspiration when I was training there. And then I was uh, training up for yellow shorts, which is the system. Once you uh, achieve a certain level, you can do a test and you achieve yellow shorts and then blue shorts. I don't know if crew still does that. Probably. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. So the blue shorts test is, was the really rough one. Be- and it's, uh, it was a big step because after blue shorts, you of course get to start to spar with other people and it kind of, uh, you know, things get real. <laughs> so I was training for blue shorts for a while, for a couple of months, and you were actually my first light sparring partner after the uh, blue shorts test. And you were very, very nice and very patient, and you held back a lot. But I got to <laughs> say, Janice Lynn, you are the first person that really gave me an ass whooping. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> <laughs> and I was so happy. <laughs> <laughs> I was so starstruck. <laughs> oh like, oh my god, this hurts so bad, but I'm fighting with Janice. This is the most amazing moment of my life. No, you held your ground. It was good. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I was only weeping on the inside. <laughs> 
<laughs> that happens to all of us when we first start sparring. <laughs> you don't laugh about me. We are here to talk about you. So let's start with your origin story. Well, what motivated me to start the sport? It was really by luck. And I, I feel lucky to be in the sport because Muay Thai has brought me so much. But I initially started purely for fitness. I tried a beginner Muay Thai program in university. School got really busy, so I stopped that. But when I moved back to Toronto, my really good friend asked me to try a class at Kuda because she had heard a lot of good things about it. So I instantly became hooked like by the challenge of the classes. And I really fell in love with the culture of this mm -hmm. beautiful sport. It's a wonderful environment. It's actually such a positive and such a motivational, encouraging environment. Yeah, I, th I think it comes from, like, because I've been to Thailand a few times, and it just comes from, I think it really comes from the Thai people. Their, their culture is really ingrained in the sport, and I've never been to a country, country where I felt more welcomed, or if they call you your family, they, they literally mean your family, like they treat you like blood, which I've never experienced before, so it's, it's really interesting. Can you talk a little bit about the World Championships and what the preparation was like for that and kind of your uh, experience? My when I first won my first World Championship, my first professional mm -hmm. championship, it was like one of like my biggest accomplishments. Uh, it was I think 2016 mm -hmm. and I had a dream ever since I started like I had a dream to fight on the king at that time's birthday, which was King Boomable. And then when I finally fought and I actually won, I won the WPMF World Championship, it was like icing on the cake. The training that I went through, typical Thai training. So you wake up in the morning and the, we'd run around anywhere between 5 to 10K. We come back, we shadow box, and then our trainer would call us over to do pads, and then we would do probably thirty minutes of clinching. So Which is so much harder than it looks. <laughs> it's especially so harder when you're clinching with Thai little Thai kids who have <laughs> so much more experience than you. <laughs> Did you find that there is a, a difference between how the fight culture is viewed in Thailand versus in Canada? Oh, for sure. Thai fighters, they start when they're they're really young. I really give it to them because they're young and they want to have fun, but they're so disciplined. So a lot of these kids, they actually, whenever they, they have fights, the prize money that they win, they give it to their family. Mm -hmm. And so they are actually helping to support their family. It's uh, quite and different from the motivation here of, you know, I'm going to start Muay Thai to drop my stubborn five pounds, you know. <laughs> For sure. And over here, when you're first starting out as a professional fighter, you don't get paid that much. So you often have to have another job to support yourself. Um, it's not really for the money. It's because you have a passion, a strong passion about the sport and what you're doing. And oftentimes people who start the sport, they're a lot older. I wish I was like younger when I first started. <laughs> I started when I was 25. Mm -hmm. And usually you're more mature and you know what you want. And so the drive is there. The inner motivation is there to, you know, be at your best if that's what you choose to do. In uh, Canada, you're, of course, the first female Canadian uh, fighter that represented the country. It's really interesting because I started Muay Thai at a really good time for females. It's just when female Muay Thai was starting to get popular. So what was really interesting is this past world championship, um, in Cancun, in the elite division, there is actually 50% females and 50% males. So wow. it's kind of like, and it's, it's really interesting. It's like almost unheard of in either other sports or even like in larger companies and stuff like that. So, and I think it's due to the leadership, mm -hmm. Stephen Fox. He really believes in, like, you know, supporting women. And when you have a strong male figure that's willing to bring female leaders up, it, it makes a really big difference. It certainly helps, yeah. So, yeah, for sure. Now, here comes the next big question. When is Muay Thai going to be consistently part of the Olympics? <laughs> that, I don't know that for sure. We're all pretty biased, but Muay Thai is a, like, a really exciting. Like, if you think of MMA, it's the stand-up part of it that's really exciting. Yes. 
Yes. Yeah, oh, so, I don't mean like, to be offensive to everybody who uh, no. <laughs> loves, I'm loves the ground game. I am I know. biased. <laughs> but it's true. I'm very biased too. <laughs> but it's true because the problem with the the ground game stuff is that unless you do it, you don't inherently understand what's happening. Like the amount of times that I would watch a UFC fight and then the announcer would say, Oh, so and so clearly has the advantage, my first thought is that does he? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'll have to take your word for it. Muay Thai is direct. You know, you're there. You're there to deliver force. And it, it's true because the sport was originally used for war. And it's just amazing how intertwined the, the sport is in their history. Now, do you have any projects right now, any passion projects that you're working on? Um, yes. Well, I'm moving to Thailand at the end of November. I'm moving uh, to pursue another chapter in my career. So that, so IFMA, the International Federation for Muay Thai Amateur, um, offered me a job to be the head female trainer of their gym headquarters in Bangkok. So wow. I'm super excited about that. As I, as we were talking about, female Muay Thai has taken off. So in countries like Afghanistan and Iran, where culture and religion prevents females and males from training in the same room, there's a need for for female trainers. So my duty will be to build female trainers from other countries and to also train other elite athletes. Wow. Yeah, I'm super excited. Um, And then there's another aspect to the job as well. So since IFMA has been preparing Muay Thai for the Olympics, Mm -hmm. um, it has become a really big leader of sport. Mm -hmm. So there has been the creation of many social programs that are aimed to help disadvantaged and underprivileged youth. Mm -hmm. So one program that I'll be helping with and heading is a Muay Thai program for children with ADHD and children on the ASD uh, spectrum. So Mm -hmm. people or children who have autism martial arts is such a fun activity for kids so. oh for sure and shows them it gives them so much discipline as well yes it's it's discipline it's it's confidence it's movement it's once i started martial arts it's a it's a whole different different feeling i don't know i felt like i was walking around taller you know? oh for sure <laughs> You know, I was, I was a young student at the time living by myself in downtown Toronto in a, in a student apartment, which, of course, was not in the nicest part of the city. So a lot of times you're wa- walking alone and it's, you know, getting really dark and late outside. And Oh, for sure. There are a few uh, women from the gym who yeah. said that they've actually been attacked and they've used elbows wow. to help defend them. <laughs> so <it's good>. Yes. <laughs> Yes, it's the elbows. As soon as we covered the elbows, I think that was the turning point. <laughs> you know, and it's, uh, because it is, and you do hear incidents, and I, I understand that it's across both genders, but for a lot of women living in a city, it's tough, and you do have all of those things that you keep in mind of, okay, well, maybe I can, you know, if somebody was to follow me, I could use my keys as a weapon, or, you know, I have to do this, or I shouldn't go alone into a parking lot. Like, those thoughts still, with you know, as especially as a woman living in downtown, they crossed my my mind a lot. And, you know, if there's a late study session and a late tutorial that ends at 9, 10 o'clock at night and I'm walking through the streets, uh, it can be very intimidating. It, it made living uh, in the center of the city mentally a lot, a lot easier. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> you have your own weapons at hand. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Well, yeah, isn't there a law that if you're a, you get into a fight, just a random fight on the street, and if you are a, a, a trained fighter, you can be charged as a, you know, using weapons in the fight, even if you technically have nothing? I'm not sure if it's that the same in Canada, actually. No, well, it it should be. <laughs> it should yeah, be, yeah. Oh, for sure. Anybody if you're a trained that... professional. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> if you're fighting somebody else, they have no chance. <laughs> that's another thing that really made me appreciate it. It's like, you know, you watch all of these movies that feature uh, fighters and they have the training montages and it's like, oh, yes, three months, this person went from nothing to fighting a person who was a seasoned fighter and they won. And, like, they would have died. It's a skill that takes a very long time to master. Oh, for sure. I remember one of my trainers when I first, on my very first uh, trip to Thailand, I was hitting the bag and he was complaining in Thai to <laughs> other trainers. And then 
I was just, I didn't know what they were saying. And I was so curious. And then, so I asked the trainer who he was talking to, what he was saying. And he was like, oh, he was complaining because he was saying how all these foreigners come to the gym Mm -hmm. and they expect to learn Muay Thai like that, like really fast. Like within one month, they're ready to go and they're ready, like, you know, to, to fight. And so he, he was saying how back in his day when he first started training, it would take them like one month working your stance and one month they'd spend. And then the next thing would be like just one the job. So they'd work it over and over again and they weren't allowed to like advance to the next one until, you know, they had perfect technique. Mm-hmm. So this is where Muay Thai came from. Thailand is the Mecca of Muay Thai and, you know, these older trainers, they've been trained like that. So that's why the the technique there is so flawless. And I can understand his frustration because there's this expectation among foreigners of like, you know, learning the technique and learning this and learning that. And we get so sidetracked. That's part of a lot of the problems that are just, you know, around the different sports and the fitness industry. People want their results instantly and forget to enjoy the process because, you know, somebody like you, for example, you have um, these accomplishments that are just unbelievable. But uh, I'm sure it's the process of training that is what you really love. I'm making an assumption, of course. (laughs) Oh, for sure. Because when I first started, like, Crew had asked me when I first started at the gym, he's like, do you want to fight? I'm like, nope. <laughs> I had no intention <laughs> no, of fighting. Like, really? are you crazy? <laughs> yeah. I was just there for fitness because it was like one of the most challenging workouts I've ever had. So and then changed? as what like, changed? so I did the same thing you did. I went through like the yellow shorts and I'm like, okay. And then I got my blue shorts and then finally I was able to spar whenever the fighters would be clinching I was always like oh I really want to clinch but I was never allowed to because I didn't have my blue shorts right and so I always had my eye on that and so yeah after I started sparring and I started clinching crew was like do you want to do a demo I'm like okay and so I did my demo and then after that like it just everything happened naturally like I was never forced to do it well for me it was never like oh you have a fight and then you have to train hard it was just always training hard and then okay i'll fight <laughs> which is because, especially kind of, if you're the kind of exactly especially if you're the kind of person that's competitive like even just with yourself the natural progression of the sport is you only know that you're getting better by testing your skill against other people with the same skill because <laughs> after a certain point how, are you, how do you know that you're getting better your, your bag isn't gonna say it's like okay well the force you delivered on this hit is getting stronger that doesn't that, <laughs> that's not that's not all encompassing, right? You you need to test your skill by having it against other extremely skilled people, and then that's how you progress. And then it just kind of sucks you in. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it, it's a quality of uh, doing an amazing sport that you just want to keep pursuing it, and that's a lot of things that you know a lot of people struggle with motivation. They can't find a sport that they really like, so they feel like they're doing it grudgingly as part of their fitness journey. So Moy is definitely one that you know if you give it a chance you're going to be doing it not because you think that you should in theory be getting fit you're going to be doing it because you love the sport and that's so crucial for a lifelong motivation instead of something that's going to you know burn out when your new year's resolution is done oh yeah for sure (laughs) do muay thai everybody it's amazing (laughs) but it is I am amazed. I am amazed at your plans for Thailand. I am amazed that you're moving. But since I'm going to be on the other side of the world, you're not going to be seeing the last of me. Cause Amazing. <laughs> so thank you so much, Janice. I know you're so busy. Now you have this amazing new adventure in front of you. So I wanted to thank you one more time for coming in. And I do pester all of my guests before the very end with a book that they recommend doesn't have to be anything related to Muay Thai. It can be Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am currently reading a book, and it's amazing. I'm also like a holistic nutritionist. Yes. Um, so it was recommended by one of my instructors because I was helping one of my oh. clients. But um, I feel like it's a really an amazing book, especially for females. But um, it's called The Mind of Your Own by Kelly Brogan. It's a big eye-opener about the science behind being female. Uh But an even bigger eye-opener 
about problems in the Western medical system and pharmaceutical industry with the overproduct overprescription of drugs for anxiety and depression. Mm-hmm. And it reveals an alternative approach to achieving optimal health. A lot of diseases have an emotional component to it. Mm-hmm. And so really getting to the root of the problem rather than just, you know, um, finding that quick fix for your for, for um, whatever problem you may have. So I, I really enjoy the book. No, it's fantastic. So could you repeat the uh, title of the book one more time? It's called A Mind of Your Own. Mind of Your Own. Kelly Brogan. Wonderful. I'm going to be definitely picking that up. Am I? <laughs> uh, <laughs> sounds like it has a lot of concepts that are directly in line with a lot of uh, my beliefs. So thank you so much for recommending it. That sounds wonderful. And thank you again for taking the time. Thank you so much for, for having me. I'm really happy that you're you're having these podcasts and I can't wait for other podcasts and people that you're going to be bringing on. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Janice. Thank you for being an awesome person, taking the time for being an inspiration and for, you know, teaching me the hard truth about fighting the first time I fought. Yeah. <laughs> but it was, uh, you know, I didn't know you personally, but to see a female dominating in the gym in a sport that at least I at the time thought was a little bit more male dominated, I didn't, I didn't know any better. It was it made a profound difference, and I'm sure you're making s- such a difference for a lot of women starting out and being an inspiration to them. So thank you for your time and for everything that you are and that you do, and uh, I will connect to you on the other side of the planet. Oh, I can't wait to see you again. I'm going to give you a huge hug. <laughs> thank you so much, Antonella. Thanks. <laughs> Bye, Janice. Bye. Bye. Hey Alphas, it's Dr. Antonella from Fierce and Flawless, The Female Project. I cannot wait to bring you more incredible stories and exceptional insights from women who made an impact. So join me on this journey. Subscribe and comment with nominations for guests you would like featured next. I want to deliver content that ignites a spark in you. So your feedback is extremely important to me. To connect with me and to get the resources mentioned in this episode, visit www.thefemaleproject.net or add me on Instagram at dr.antonella. Thank you for listening and stay tuned.